Boker Tov, Yom Tov, Zarim Tovim, and Laila Tov. Good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening. I hope this finds you well wherever you are at. I'm going to speak from my heart today. I've been really looking at the word belief and how our beliefs can be limitations to our maturation. Since last Saturday, this word keeps coming back up over and over again, so I know that I need to unpack it. I, for one, do not want to be limited anymore. And my awareness is being elevated as it illuminates just how many limitations I have placed upon myself. So let's dig this up and root it out. First, I want to talk about the etymology of belief, where it came from, and where we see it today. So in the late 12th century, it meant confidence reposed in a person or thing, faith in a religion. Has Germanic and Old Saxon, Middle Dutch influence, coming from a word meaning dear and esteemed, to care, desire, and love. So when we take that to see how it morphed, it came to be a meaning, a conviction of truth of a preposition or alleged fact without knowledge. And that was by the 1530s. And it was also sometimes used to include the absolute conviction or certainty which accompany, accompanies knowledge. And looking at also in the 12th century, it was from a creed and essential doctrines of a religion or church, things held to be true as a matter of religious doctrine. And by 1714, the general sense of that which is believed. So when we take a look at this, belief meant trust in God, while faith meant loyalty to a person based on promise or duty. A sense preserved in keep one's faith, in good or bad faith, and in common usage of faithful, faithless, which contained no notion of divinity. But it took on a religious sense beginning in the 14th century, translations, I'm going to say that again, it took on the religious sense beginning in the 14th century, translations, and belief had by the 16th century become limited to mental acceptance of something as true. From the religious use as in the sense of things held to be true as a matter of religious doctrine. So that's where it came from. Did you catch when I said a mental acceptance as something is true? Did you also hear that within the etymology, they actually brought up the word faith as being separate, as loyalty to a person based on promise or duty? This is one of the reasons why it is so difficult to walk away from our religious dogma due to our loyalty as our duty due to what we've been taught about Jesus. But that is all formed on translations that would keep you bound. Conviction of the truth of a preposition or alleged fact without knowledge. Now I do need to say this. I'm sure that we have all had experiences with Jesus. I know I have. I know him as Yeshua now. But it was not from a book that told me what to believe. See, this book roots itself in the mind with the ego and feeds it. The ego takes this information to form and create itself into a religious ego that then builds itself a citadel within the mind, taking over the throne of your temple. When you position yourself with your beliefs in the mind, 
you are giving power to the ego as God within the temple. And anything that challenges the beliefs of the religious ego mind, well, defensive measures will be activated. How do I know this? Oh, well, because I've done it, and it has cost me relationships because of it. In Hebrew and the Aramaic writings, faith and belief are the same thing. As to be firm and faithful is to be true and certain. But these are only figurative based upon a word that in its root means to build up and support or to foster as a parent or nurse. And really, this is the root of the word Amen. So what is my point here? My point is this. Is the difference between the Greco-Roman mindset and the Hebrew-Aramaic mindset, that of the mind of the head versus the mind of the heart. If you place faith and belief in your head, you will be locked into a system that limits you, as the ego, the ego will only go so far as fear will let it go. On the other hand, if you have faith and belief in your heart, then you will be limitless. Let me say this just a bit differently. The ego is in your head and the spirit is in your heart. So whatever you use to build yourself up, to foster you, and to support you, it should be ran through the filter of the heart, spirit, and not the head. If you are being told what to believe in, and take it not to the heart first, but rather to the head. You just fed your ego and gave it another brick to mortar in place within the fortress it builds within your mind. But if you listen to your heart and follow its lead, it will lead you into all truth, which is love without conditions. The heart will reveal to you what truth, what is truth and what is not. So if you are told something or read something and the heart does not agree, then you are programming your mind. And this also goes for tell a vision and its programs and tall tales as well. See, Eastern Mindset teaches its children to view things from the heart mind instead of the head mind. Western does just the opposite. So you can determine where you are at or anyone else if you or they have said or say. See, it says it right here in the Word, which is the programming book. The sacred languages can only be discerned through the spirit, through the heart. If one tries to approach it through the head and ego, you will experience frustration, <laughs> lack of patience. The heart, where spirit dwells, has all the time in the world. The head, where ego dwells, does not. I suggest that it's time to take a stick of dynamite to the ego fortress that is keeping you and me as a prisoner in our own mind that keeps us bound in duty so that the freedom through the Spirit can remove the limitations that we've placed upon ourselves as we've agreed to them. Let us let the heart lead instead of believing things that are a construct that constricts within the mind. Build yourself up by that which the Spirit of the heart teaches you so you can reparent yourself through truth, which is perfected love. This will unlock the cell you have trapped yourself within, the limitations of that which you have been told by kicking out the prison ward. 
your religious ego, Satan, as well as the anti-anointing book that has been used to tell you what to do instead of how to be. You are, we are, limitless beings and it is high time that we take our power back. By the way, if anyone tells you anything, go within to see if it's valid. If it is fear-based and part of duality, then it is a construct of the ego and the matrix. If it is love, love is based and brings forth unity. So therefore, if it is of love, bringing forth unity, then it is the spirit truth meant to set you free. And that you can take to heart. Shalom, shalom, and namaste.